Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this incredible celebration today. And God has provided us with probably the best weather we could hope for uh, for this wonderful occasion. I hope those of you who need a seat have found one. There's some chairs scattered around, so I'm my 45-minute speech, you know, will be interesting, but no, I, I won't do that to you. But please make yourself comfortable. And if you're a woman in high heels um, and you're aerating the grass, just keep get your balance. That's all I can ask of you. Ten years ago, um, no, 11 years ago, on about July 1st, 2003, I was assuming my first day as the president of this university, and I was staying temporarily in the Casa de la Paz, and I opened the door of this apartment, and this woman came right out from the other apartment, right across from me, a woman who was just starting her first day on the job, who turned out to be our own Dean Sally Bose Harden, who is here glowing because of the achievement of this wonderful, wonderful project that she has been working on with her incredible faculty and staff for many, many years. We are here because we all recognize something very, very important. Uh, it's a true fact that we are mortal. We might not think that someday we're going to face God in heaven, and I'm sure all of you will, but it's the truth. And we all recognize that it's probable, maybe not inevitable, but probable, that at some point in our life, perhaps many times during our lifetime, we will need a nurse. Yes, we do need physicians, but we will always need a nurse, somebody to take care of us. And we are here today to recognize that one of the most important professions, probably one of the most growing professions in our country and around the world is that of the nurse. The person who cares for us, who helps us in many of our life's passages, who does so much to help us maintain the quality of life and the health that we can, but when those moments come, when we are failing, when we are ill, when loved ones of ours may be facing the end of this life, we will need a nurse. And the men and women that have helped us come to the opportunity to build this great, great building that will be taking place right here recognize that, and through their generosity, we will have an ability to serve not only you, but the many millions and millions of people, especially the aging, who are exponentially growing in our own population here in the country. And so before I go any further, what I'd like to do is recognize the fact that there are many people who have and are contributing to this project. But I want to recognize in a special way the major benefactors. Today we are celebrating the groundbreaking of the Betty and Bob Beister Institute for Nursing Research, Advanced Practice, and Simulation. This is the institute of the future. But the folks who have given us the major gift for this who are here with us today with their children and their families and friends are the ones that have had for many decades vision and this decade have a lot of vision. So would you help me right now recognize Dr. Bob and Mrs. Betty Beister, their daughter Mary Ann, their daughter-in-law Lan, and their son Jim who are here with us today. To them, we owe tremendous, tremendous gratitude. Within this incredible institute, we will be blessed to have a PhD research library that will offer direct access to the PhD nursing dissertations 
and the clinical-based and evidence-based clinical studies that our students with their faculty and others will have completed. Access to the latest research databases for current historic, local, national, and international nursing materials. And that library is possible because of the gift of the Krauss family. Jim Krauss, a law school graduate from 1975 and a member of our board of trustees, who passed away a few years ago, was committed to doing something for his, in honor of his mother, who was a nurse. And we are very pleased to have his widow, his wonderful spouse of many years, Gail, and two of his sons, Mark, Andrew and David, with us here today. Would you please join us in thanking them for their wonderful, wonderful presence. You can't be a healthcare professional today and be effective without being also a pretty good techie. Technology has become sort of the maybe the a third arm, another, another tremendous support and help for those who are caring for the sick, for the dying, for those who are trying to help manage populations and their health. And one of the wonderful features of the new institute will be an executive classroom, a highly specialized, technical, technically specialized classroom that would be the most current and innovative of its kind, an area for simulation and standardized patient care. And that is possible because of the Martin Dickinson Foundation Mr. Dickinson and his foundation with his family who are here today as well have named this the Donald and Elizabeth M. Dickinson classroom in honor of Martin's parents. This is a classroom that will provide videotaping of graduate studies in their to really examine their clinical work. An area where medical devices, biotech products, and nursing procedures can be tested. And if you know the truth, you know, in a lot of hospitals, people have major investments in technology and highly, highly sophisticated equipment. But if the healthcare professionals don't know how to use them and use them correctly, they might as well not waste their money. This is the kind of classroom that will provide instruction for people to use those devices. Would you please? Join me in thanking Mr. Martin Dickinson, his wife Carol, and Rebecca and family for all of the work they've done to provide us this classroom. Thank you. Those of us who live in San Diego know that we have a growing population of military veterans. Veterans who come out of combat often with great physical and psychological needs. And this work that our nursing school continues to do and will be, continue to be improved upon with our doctoral programs in nursing practice, our advanced practice nursing uh, programs and our PhD programs will allow us to do a particularly good job in working on behalf of veterans helping to do research with our faculty and students together to treat ailments like PTSD, traumatic brain injuries, post-surgical delirium, and other psychological systems related to combat. That's just one of many areas, starting from conception, from birth, the prenatal care, all the way through one's life to palliative care for the sick and dying, that is something that we will be able, and have been doing, but will be able to do much better thanks to the gifts from the benefactors here and those of you, many faculty members and others who have contributed, contributed to this project. So I wanna say a special thanks to Dean Harden, to our faculty and staff, who themselves have given generously to make this project realized today. So with that, I would like to say I'm grateful I ask God to bless this work, to bless our benefactors, and hope that you all will be back 
Before too long, not only the groundbreaking today, but the grand opening soon. Thank you very much. Well, President Lyons has projected a future vision of the Beister Institute for Nursing Research, and I would like us to take a little trip back in time to our School of Nursing's beginning. It is 1977. The first two classes of 36 registered nurses have graduated with their bachelor's degree. A master's degree nursing program has begun, the first in San Diego, which is then the ninth ranked city in the United States. The National League of Nursing has awarded the school full accreditation even though the school was only 15 months old. On Tuesday, September 6, 1977 at 4.30, a group gathered across from Founders Hall, President Arthur Hughes, Provost Sister Sally Fury, Reverend Lawrence Stolen, and founding Dean Irene Palmer. And they gathered to bless and break ground for the new Han School of Nursing building. What was going on in the world then? Well, President Jimmy Carter soon would sign the Food Stamp Act and the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty for 15 countries that included the Soviet Union. A partial United States government shutdown would begin and not end until December. Voyager 1, the unmanned space probe, had just launched because there was a favorable alignment of the planets. In healthcare, the first angioplasty was done in Zurich. Closer to home, the California Office of Statewide Health Planning and Development reported that more registered nurses instead of simply AIDS or LPNs were now taking care of California patients in the hospital. Betty Beister was living in La Jolla, California with her husband, Bob, and their three teenage children, her youngest, Mary Ann, and their sons, Mark and Jim, who had just graduated high school that year. Mrs. Beister had majored in sociology and, and education at UT Austin and met her husband, Dr. Bob Beister, when she worked over the summer at Los Alamos National Laboratory. Betty especially enjoyed her garden, which no doubt gave her peace, tranquility, and respite from raising adolescents. However, I'm sure the Beister children were very well behaved. <laughs> right, Miss Betty? Mrs. Beister always had a strong interest in healthcare and education and served on many healthcare and medical center boards. She was an avid supporter of organic gardening and healthy cooking long before it was fashionable. Miss Betty, I hope you will forgive us because we are going to have some hot dog, cracker jack, and peanut indulgences this afternoon. Okay. Dr. Bob Beister, a nuclear physicist, had founded SAIC eight years earlier. His visionary leadership created what would become the largest engineering company in the world. It exemplified a masterful blend of employee teamwork, independence, and most importantly, employee ownership. Dr. Beister obviously had great skill in selecting his partners, for he had chosen Betty as his life partner. In 1977, Martin Dickinson was immersed deeply in San Diego commercial banking. And he also served on several boards. With his wife, Carol, and children, Rebecca and Chris, Martin always remained committed to philanthropy, especially to those organizations involved in health care and education. Over the years, Martin Dickinson and his family foundation have continued, continued to be an avid supporter of everything the School of Nursing has done. Back in 77, Jim Krause was only 27 years old. He had graduated, as President Lyons said, from USD Law School, finished working as a clerk for the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, Justice Carter, and had just joined the law firm of Sullivan, Jones, and Archer. Jim's future wife, Gail, was in college then, and their three sons, 
Andrew, Mark, and David were not even yet a twinkle in an angel's eye. Tom and Sally Harden had just finished defending their PhD dissertations, and with their newborn and three-year-old, they were busy unpacking moving boxes in Kankakee, Illinois. I don't think any of us ever would have imagined that 37 years in the future, we would all be here together, colleagues, students, and all of you champions of nursing, once again to bless the land, break ground, to build an institute that will be even more important and prominent in USD in the nursing profession's future. We are here in a defining moment one of those life moments that always remains vivid and crystal clear that segments our life into meaningful chapters. Today's groundbreaking is not only a defining moment, but also one tinged with remarkable coincidences. Today would have been Jim Krause's 64th birthday. It is also remarkable that USD had the opportunity to break ground much earlier than we had originally anticipated. So I can't help wondering if Jim and Dean Janet Rogers and Irene Palmer weren't all up there rooting for us in some of their heavenly spheres. Palmer had been a distinguished scholar of Florence Nightingale and served as PBS's consultant on their series on Nightingale's life. Today also is the birthday of Florence Nightingale. And she was our first nurse scientist. Now, I would like to take credit for having being smart enough to schedule this groundbreaking on Florence Knighton's birthday, but actually it was my students who told me afterwards, do you realize that that's Florence Nightingale's birthday? I ask you to imagine in your mind's eye a scientist. What do you see? Do you see a middle-aged man, silver-haired, glasses, lab coat, peering into a microscope? Or do you see a nurse? See, probably not so much. The Beister Institute for Nursing Research, Advanced Practice and Simulation ultimately will stand as a symbol that nursing is indeed a science, as well as an art, that nursing research and practice save lives. Were it not for the generous gifts of all of you, and also our faculty and staff and alumni and the city of San Diego and county supervisor Ron Roberts, who, because of them, they are now being able to build our generator as we speak. There's so many donors, I, and it doesn't matter if they're small donors or big donors, there's too many for me to list right now, but um, I thank you and I would ask you to look at the back of your program because there are still many naming opportunities that you can tell your friends about in case you would like to name one of those inside facilities. So um, I have heard that we have one more group who also wishes to make a gift for the Beister Institute today, and that is the graduating class of 2014. So I would ask GNSA President, Mr. Anthony Rodella, to come forward. <laughs> and I'm happy to announce that we now have raised $11,201,500. Thank you very much. And I'll ask our other GNSA officers if you'd please present our gifts of appreciation to Mrs. Beister, Dickinson, and Kraus. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I didn't think you wanted the flowers. <laughs> to all of our donors, the university's leadership, especially Provost Allen, Vice Presidents Cal Fayen, Dillabo, O'Malley, and Thaxton, and to Nursing's Development Officer, Joan Martin, thank you so much for all you have done. 
I would ask the architects and construction gentlemen who are all circling together there in a group. Um, Ed Helokovich, where are you? Wave your hand. Where are you, Ed? Okay, they're way back there in a circle. Wave your hand. He was the uh, architect, the main major architect. Uh, we also, he's from GKK Works. Uh, we have the DPR construction gentleman with us. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Jones wasn't able to come, but we have Brad Krause here, who will be the on-site uh, construction worker. We have uh, Brad. Brad, how do you say it? I'm sorry about your last name, Brad, but Brad is our head archi uh, landscape architect with Knoll Landscaping Company. And uh, our, the rest of our team is Conley Robinson, the University of San Diego architect, Mary Whalen, our head art designer, and I have deep gratitude for Dr. Cynthia Conley and Dr. Karen McCauley, who have been on that team with me hours and hours for three years. So um, thank you. And I also would like to just say on behalf of our current students and faculty and those who will teach, study, and conduct research here over the next decades, on behalf of all of us, thank you. And now I'm going to um, ask if Mary Ann Beister will uh, represent the Beister family and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you all for being here to celebrate this special milestone. Um, whoops, sorry, uh, for the university and for the, for the school. And can you hear me? Good? OK. Okay, all right, so uh, on behalf of the Beister family and especially uh, my mother, Betty Beister, uh, we want to congratulate the university and, and the School of Nursing on the addition of the Beister Institute for Nursing Research Advanced Practice and Simulation. Uh, our journey with, with uh, the nursing school really began about six years ago, and this is through the efforts of, of my mom uh, to support PhD students uh, through a scholarship program called the ARCH Scholarship Program, which is Advancing Science in America. And we consistently found these amazing candidates coming from, um, from the nursing school. And so our first candidate was Nicole Morano, and she was studying to, uh, uh, obesity and looking for how to address um, interventions to reduce obesity. And since then, she has graduated, and she is now an assistant professor at Kennesaw State University, I believe it's in Georgia. And um, so now over the course of six years, we have six scholars, and um, some of them have, 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 uh, have graduated as well and continue to do research. Some of them will um, just about graduate and uh, continue in research and, and teaching. And uh, Beth Lai is an example of that, who will be going to, to Palomar College, teaching there. And we have a few, and you know who you are, uh, that are working on their dissertations. And um, we're really excited about staying uh, engaged, engaged with you all. It's really through the experience of, of working with these scholars and then working and learning uh, from the leadership here at the, at the School of Nursing, um, where we've come to uh, you know, acknowledge the need for nursing educators and researchers. And it is uh, with great pleasure that we see uh, this new Beister Institute being an incubation of these uh, nursing educators so that we can have um, improved health care policy and practice. So thank you, and we're looking forward to the years to come. I now would like to ask Monsignor Dillabo if he would do the blessing of the lands. It's an honor to do the blessing prayer of this site on which will rise a beautiful new addition to our campus. I will tell you that any time the nursing school asks me to do anything, I say yes because I want that need a nurse card very close to my heart at all times. So not that there's any hidden agenda, but so it is my honor to ask us all to pray. God, the architect and builder of all creation, 
We come humbly to ask your blessing on the safe construction of this institute. We praise you for the materials that you give us to create, the vision of those who set forth this project, the trust of those who believed in the vision and the skill and handiwork of those who will build it. Bless all who labor to make the dream a reality. Keep them safe from all injury and may their work always give you praise. Help us never to take the gifts you give us for granted, the beauty of the earth, the privilege of work, and the joy of community that together continues your work of creating. Bless our benefactors in a special way, especially the Beister, Krauss, and Dickinson families, but all who have built our wonderful nursing program through the years. Lord, we ask your blessing. May this project come to completion safely, on time, on time, and of course, under budget. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I just said the last one is the most important, please. Um, we now have uh, the ambassadors, the USD ambassadors. If you'll please distribute uh, the hard hats to, and I would like Mrs. Beister uh, and President Lyons uh, to have those. And we need one gold shovel, please, and two silver shovels. Either the ambassadors or the nursing students, whoever is closest to those.